Oh, here you see better, huh? Good morning. Oh. So welcome to our cave. This is what is believed to be the earliest wine making unit in the world. And as you can see, the construction of particularities, it's kind of a platform which is bent, you know, it's, it's involved in the tank, a fermentation tank where the grapes were crushed and the juice was flooding into the tank, then it was transporting into you know, the vessels for keeping, for aging, these um, so-called pitos, in Armenian we are saying koras. Mm -hmm. So, second aspect that we believe that this is a winemaking complex are the multiple grape remains that were, you know, here. Plus, what was interesting in some of the carasses, we found Greek teams and Greek author Xenophon, who was passing Armenia in six, uh, in fifth century BC, was describing that Armenians were drinking wine with reeds. Mm -hmm. And this is six maybe a logical proof that what he was writing about this drinking system. Of course, it's coming from very early times. It's even pictured on Sumerian seals and so on. And it seems that this is an oriental, one of the oriental ways of drinking wine. Another aspect that we believe that this is a wine-making complex are the archaeochemical analysis showing some residues of the world. And I don't understand much. It's published, but there are some residues proving it and now we are preparing a new publication for um, about you know some fungis on the um, seeds which are in fermentation time again proving that there is some kind of alcohol you know, in this kind of way. So what is interesting in the site as well that the site is unique because yeah, the organic materials here are preserved out there. So this part is so closed. I guess Name. this is a piece that they said Solomon it's going to be for exploration. Mm -hmm. And the amount of grapes, figs, and other trees, and so on, is allowing us to cover and reconstruct lots of things here. Even though we have some medieval intrusion into old layers, it's more better because we have not only calculated grape remains, but medieval as well, which is allowing us to see a development by DNA study from 6,000 years onwards. And the last interesting achievement is that medieval branch, with help of which they just checked what is inside, they dug up the vessel, you know, has very good DNA preservation. The branch is C14 controlled, so it's 13 foster. It's, it's around 1,000 years old, 10th century. And the study of the grapes growing in the gorge, in the remnants of the old vineyards, which belongs to the Norawang monastery. And the comparison with DNA extracted from here is showing the same result. You know? So at least we can say that this orange black variety was uh, cultivated here at least 1,000 years. Now we are working on more ancient DNA. It's more difficult to extract it. You know. But in general, it's a very interesting winemaking region. And you know, uh, the winemaking here is not everyday winemaking. It has this environment of ritual game with our own finds of, you know, um, skulls and human remains and so on. It's showing that we are facing really a ritualistic uh, usage of wine in this period, you know, when wine was kind of a doorway to the next world when they brought here people, they sacrificed them, they ate them, plus they mixed the human blood with grape juice, yeah. which they believe was kind of, you know, connection of two natures, first nature and second human nature. And then in this way, they were thinking that they are being attached to the next world, to the gods and sending these people for saying to the Lord's mercy and uh, waiting for next fertile year. So it's kind of a small temple where very complex rituals were taking off with uh, participation of human body parts, 
plus wine and grapes. And people were thinking, you know, in cyclic way, for them the year was starting in spring, the god was born in spring and then died in winter, so they were trying to keep this cycle with the nature. Why I'm telling it? Because another interesting aspect that we have a vessel with, full with human excrements, mm -hmm. clustered. When they ate them and digest them, they were thinking that excrement is a symbol of the cycle being closed. You know? mm -hmm. and the things I'm telling, I'm not saying it's 100% um, true, uh, because there is, of course, some of my imagination, but, but of course, you can interpret it, you know, in many ways, but some facts are showing that the story is something like this. You know? So wine was an important, how to say, component on the, of their vision of the world, on, on the life, on revival. You know? Many of Christian understandings are, you know, uh, being fixed here. Kind of if you um, shortage the excavation results from the cave into one sentence, it will be, this is my blood you drink, this is my body you eat. Absolutely the same, you know, understanding. And, mm, yes, wine played a very important role in the ritual. It was a vital drink, especially we have only one baby burial with uh, basket, you know, what was kind of a cradle. The head was preserved completely with hair and everything. The head was on basket that help us to understand that basket itself is a cradle and itself coffin, you know? Like, if you remember from the Holy Bible, Moses' mother in the basket put him into the... So it was kind of a, uh, this event, and there was a cup made from horn, very beautiful one, with uh, the cup with milk, with food. So two cups, at least, yes. And the cup is, uh, how to say, reflecting the revival. It's that understanding of the Holy Grail, you know, and it's again related to the wine. It's cup of revival. That's why life and death are always related to wine. Without wine, there is no life and death. Even now, today, in our games and everywhere, yes, all this is coming from very early, you know, agricultural people who were worshipping the God who was dying and reviving, dying and reviving again in cycle. So that's what we have in this cave and it's really very interesting, very interesting for us. Now of course we are not concentrated only on the cave, we are doing other excavations in this region because there are the tasks, the scientific goal is more wide. We are studying the grape varieties. We found wild grapes here, you know, showing that this can be really a place for perhaps domestication, but it's not proved yet. I mean, we are working on it, you know. Plus, very unique varieties. Plus, we found that this region was part of the Urartian Empire, one kingdom, who was kind of a big kingdom like Assyria, Mm. And this was part of it, we didn't know before it. And as a viticulture region, Urartians uh, pay a big attention to it because for them wine production, it was the biggest state of wine production, you know, in Near East. So they used, and we found remnants of their palaces, 